We're here in Colombia. This is the only way to travel when you're going birding here. So we're going to go up into the Andes by Llama. This should be awesome. Let's go birding. Hey, buddy. Don't spit on us. Let's go. Check out some birds. <laughs> No other country on earth holds more bird species than Colombia. With approximately 1,900 different birds, Colombia is home to an astonishing 10% of all avian life on the planet. The culture, food and scenery, combined with some of the best birding in the world, make for a truly unforgettable experience. On this show, we travel to the Otankimbaya region in quest of our golden bird, the Cocaguan. Water quality is of prime importance to the residents of any city in the world. And this is no different in Colombia. This is the Olivares River that flows down into the city of Manizales. And this is their water supply. If we want to know if this is pristine water, there is one bizarre and crazy songbird that can tell us just that. It is an indicator of good water quality. Let's go get a look at where this crazy songbird makes its nest. So these white-capped dippers like to nest above some of the strongest parts of the water here. You can see I can barely stand over here, but there's a white-capped dipper nest which is active right up underneath this overhang. So let's get a look. There you can see the nest. And that is an active white cap dipper nest. They're not here right now. So we're going to get out of here and try and see whether we can get a look at these pretty phenomenal songbirds. Now this is so crazy because if you can think of a canary, a canary that swims underwater, that's pretty much what a dipper is. Let's go get a look. Woo! Right behind me here on this wall of this reservoir is one of the most spectacular and unique songbirds in the world, the aquatic white cap dipper of South America. What a bird! You can see how those claws have so adapted to clawing onto that algae, that really slippery algae. Those claws are going to dig right into every little crevice on the rock face so that he can work his way up vertical surfaces with water flowing down on top of him to boot. So these birds are highly specialized and highly adapted to living in these fast-flowing streams. They've got those sharp toes. They've got these amazing, amazing ability to go underwater and to shed the water off their feathers. And they really are spectacular, spectacular songbirds, the white-capped dipper. Dippers are the only songbirds in the world that will actually totally submerge themselves in rivers and in water to get at aquatic insects and crustaceans. There's several members of the family Sinkly Day, but this one, the white cap dipper, has to be the most handsome of them all. Found only in South America, the white cap dipper spends its time on these white water streams of the upper reaches of the Andes in places like Colombia. What an absolutely special and spectacular bird. Richard, you've seen dippers before. In the United States, you've seen them in the UK. How does this one compare? This is probably the most striking. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's wild. It was up on the steepest dam there, almost vertical, eating away. Incredible how it was able to hang there. 
It's an incredible creature, this thing. Now, there's one other species of bird that likes to spend a lot of its time in aquatic habitats. So stick with us as we go in search of the majestic torrent duck. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Hobie Polarized Sunglasses, the world's best polarized sunglass, and by Coleman, legendary quality innovative camping gear. If you think the white cap dipper is spectacular, check out this beauty, the torrent duck behind me. This is a male behind me, you can clearly see that. It's got that black and white striped head and this bright red bill. It's amazing how some birds can adapt to environments such as this. Torrent ducks, white cap dippers, torrent tyrannulets can all make it in this crazy, very, very harsh environment. But torrent ducks are specially adapted at doing this. The torrent duck behind me here is just sitting on this rock and I can look at all his specific adaptations right now. Those very, very thick webbed feet and the stiff tail with the long, long feathers, long spines that'll enable it to use it like a rudder in the current. Absolutely amazing. There he goes, look at him, there he goes straight into the water. Amazing. No regard for danger. He just dives straight into the white water here and just goes along with the white water like a missile shooting down the river. Absolutely incredible. There he goes down the stream there. Wow. What a spectacular duck. I've been stung like a hundred times. Ah, oh, bird. Ah, ah, we're, in a, we're getting stung by bees here. We're like in a swarm of bees. Ah, oh, jeez. Come on, let's go. He's making me crazy. He's making me nuts. Rawson Rivers with expensive cameras, no bueno. We've got the female torrent duck. We just crossed over a broken bridge. We're now going to have to cross through the rapids here to try and get a view. Barbed wire, no bueno. To the show. Ah. Oh. Here, grab my camera. Grab my camera. Now it's mud. Oh, mud. I'm gonna kill him. I'm getting too old for this. This is a beautiful adventure. A lot of time trying to find the female of Torrent Dog, and finally we saw it after that dangerous bridge. Wow, oh, this is amazing. We have been the whole morning trying to find the female torrent duck. When we finally found it, we were in a very difficult situation because the bridge was destroyed by the river and was a huge nest of bees. And we had to cross the river inside the water. And these waters are very dangerous because it's a huge torrent and the water is very cold. Yes, we got the female torrent duck. We've been walking down this river and finally we've got her perched right in the middle of the river. We couldn't get a hold on her because she was swimming up and down the rapids. I got one brief shot of her swimming up the rapids and now she seems pretty relaxed on a rock right in the middle of the river. I'm a ways away, I'm totally zoomed in. I'm at uh, 1750 millimeters zoomed in here. I've got the vibration reduction on and we got female torrent duck. Two separate excursions for torrent duck. One for the male and now a separate one for the female. 
And I tell you, this female, she was a little blighter. She was tough to get, nothing like the male. Woo! Female torrent duck. All right. Right here, Otun Kimpayo on the river. As we're leaving, we then get the male and the female together. Look at that behavior. So amazing. I've got both these torrent ducks doing this incredible display on the rock, kind of pushing their necks up. The female kind of goes down and then she lifts her neck up. Absolutely spectacular. Both of them doing this display. Look at the display. Look at them both going racing. Here yeah, they come both together. Get them together. There's another pair coming. Two pairs. They're chasing each other. Look. Two pairs of torrent ducks, they're chasing each other. Just when you think it can't get any better, we're watching these two torrent ducks, a pair of them doing this display, and they're going at it, and I think it's some kind of mating display, when next minute, another pair of torrent ducks come up the river, obviously into their territory, and they come right up next to us. They have this massive brawl in the water, chasing each other. It just does not get better than this. You never know what to expect in places like Colombia. Wow. There they go together. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Columbia, where the only risk is wanting to stay. Guiding services provided by Birding Tours Columbia. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. Let's see if James can do his best torrent duck imitation going down these rapids. I don't think he can compare to the torrent duck because he's definitely not as graceful. So Rich, did I look like a torrent duck? No, you look like a drowning whale, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This is Burning from the Edge. Otunkin Bayo is not only famous for a very rare guan, but it's also renowned for being one of the best sites in the world to see the second largest passerine after the umbrella birds in South America, the red ruffed fruit crow. These birds are remarkably common here, and I've got one perched up here in this Urupan forest behind me. These birds will often lick in groups of females and males where the males will make this bizarre call and it almost sounds as though you're blowing across the top of a bottle. And I'm gonna show you how this can work to sometimes bring in the bird even closer. He's looking. There he comes. He's coming right in close. And now I can get my close-up shot. Awesome. Full frame view of red ruffed fruit crow right in front of us here in the Sorupan forest at Otokinbayo. One of the best places in the world to view this, the second largest of the Katingas. Wow, what an outlandish bird that was. Tell me, is this one of the one of the absolute spectacular species of Colombia? Yeah, and then I really think very rare used to be around the people, around the lodge, it's easy to find. And it's a very, very big Kotinga. Yeah, what a beautiful, beautiful bird. And you know, they, they have a very disjunct population. They found in Venezuela, they found in Ecuador, they found in Colombia, they even found in parts of Brazil and Argentina, but in these very, very disjunct populations. And they're nowhere common, and they're nowhere in high densities, except at this place that we're at right now. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917, and by Audubon Guides, nature at your fingertips.
The incredible diversity of life in a tropical rainforest in a place like Colombia can be attributed to productivity. Productivity of fruit, because here, year round, there is a bountiful supply of fruit. And many birds take advantage of this. If we look at some of the larger birds that take advantage of larger fruits, they all employ different strategies to get at the fruit. Take this red ruffed fruit crow, for example. This bird will actually stoop and glide into a fruiting tree, pick out a ripe fruit, and then just extend its wings for a moment, grab the fruit, and fly off. Birds like trogons have specially adapted wings. They've got slotted wings, almost like an aeroplane, that give them incredible lift as they fly up. So they'll spot a ripe fruit, and they'll fly up with those slotted wings. They've also got this nice tail, which they use as a, as a stop, or as a, as a break as they come in, and they'll go up, grab that fruit, stop for one moment, grab it, and then fly off. Birds like arasaris, toucanets, and toucans will actually fly into the tree, perch on the tree, and just like a surgeon, they'll nip at that fruit and then eat it. And then there's one last family of really, really big birds that feed on big fruit, the crassids, or the guans. And these guans are specially adapted for sitting in a fruit tree. They've got extremely long necks and they'll sit in a fruit tree and they'll use that long neck to probe and to get at the fruit that they're trying to go for. Now these guans are very reluctant to fly. So this benefits them in one way in that they don't spend a lot of energy when looking for fruit because they'll just sit in one area and they'll eat a whole lot of fruit. But it does place them at a disadvantage because their choice or their selection of fruit is limited. In one tree, they're going to feed on the ripe fruits, but they're also going to feed on a lot of unripe fruits as well. And it's for this sedentary manner of feeding that a bird like the coca guan, our golden bird for this show, is severely threatened. They sit up in the top of the trees and it's so easy for a hunter to just take a gun, pop one, and it'll drop out of that tree. Additionally, there's very little habitat left. There are these tiny isolated fragments of habitat where the coca guan now lives. So this is a highly threatened, highly endangered species. There's probably only about five to 600 coca guans left on planet Earth. Let's go see if we can find one. So this is the habitat. endangered birds in Colombia, right up above us in a tree here. I'm going to try and get some great video footage through this Nikon scope with the FSA adapter and my Nikon camera. Can you see him? Where is he? He's gone to the left. Where is he? Oh, it's the same place. Same place. Look at him. He's feeding. You can see this beautiful bright red wattle underneath the throat of this coca guan. The sunlight is just hitting it perfectly right now. Guans are such amazing birds. They're so big, they look like turkeys. And in fact, they were actually placed in the same family as turkeys a while ago. And they're now in their own family, the crassids. But boy, are these endangered birds. There are in fact a lot of guans in the world that are threatened, especially because they're such big birds. They've got a lot of meat, so a lot of people like to hunt them, but also because of habitat fragmentation. And right here, this is probably the only place in the world where you can get really, really good views of coca guan here at Otunkumbaya. That is phenomenal. Coca guan, our golden bird. Yes. 